Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about containers. Under 10 minutes we are going to discuss every important aspect about container. In our last video we looked at what is containerization but today we will go deeper into containers. So let's just first do a quick recap of what containerization is. So containerization essentially means that we are bundling our application together with every dependency or anything that our application needs, whether it is configuration file or library or any kind of dependency. We want to package all of that together as a container so that it is a seamless deployment. It is bug free, efficient and it is very, very easy to scale, maintain, deploy and take from one environment to another. It's an extremely widely used concept in every organization and almost every project these days. And all cloud vendors have services corresponding to containerization. So what are containerized applications? So this diagram depicts that in a nutshell. We have a physical infrastructure of a machine. On top we have the host operating system and then we have some uh, something as a middleman between our containers and the operating system who is helping us to build those containers. So here in this case I have depicted docker. Just like for VMs we need a hypervisor, similarly to create containers we need some tool or technology or somebody who understands how to create an image and create a container. So that's docker here. Typically on a physical machine we can have multiple containers running. Now what is a container? When we talk about containerization, the basic building block is container. A container is nothing but a fully packaged and portable computing environment. Why are we calling it a computing environment? Because container is essentially a one unit that is encapsulating everything. The binaries, the libraries, dependency, configuration files, everything packaged together. And like I said, it makes it easy and portable to take it from one place to another. So that's the basic building block, which is container. Now, when we talk about containers or containerization, there are a number of terms that will keep appearing. So I want to talk about each of those and explain what they essentially mean and how are they related to this whole concept of containerization. So one of the fundamental thing is a container image. What is a container image? So you must have heard, if you are working with AWS, let's say, you must have heard about AMIs, which are machine images, right? Image is nothing, but you, what you are trying to do is you are trying to take a snapshot and trying to use it anywhere that you want. Similarly, to create containers, we create container images. Those are immutable. They are kind of a static file which has executable code that can create a container in a computing system. So to create a container, we need a container image. And most synonymously, you would hear the name of Docker, which helps you in creating these container images and then create containers out of them. So image is a static file with the executable code and that is what is getting used to create an image and create a container. Then you would hear about container repository. Just like our code needs a repository, similarly containers also need a repository. Where would you store your container image? Out of which you will later create a container. So that is stored in a repository which is known as container repository. When we talk about docker in subsequent videos, we will talk about the docker repository that is there. Repositories can be in two flavors, public or private. But essentially, they are nothing but a uh, place where you can keep your container images. Then uh, let's also talk about container standards. So there are certain standards for containers, for uh, formatting the containers, for the runtime environment that the containers need. It is controlled by something called OCI, Open Container Initiative they offer two types of specifications. So they are giving us a standard or a specification to which we should comply. So if you look at Docker, Kubernetes, they all comply to these OSI standards. And there are specifications in two areas. One is for the runtime. How should the runtime for a container look like? That's the runtime specification. How should an image, that immutable static file we spoke about, 
which actually spawns the container how should that look about so that is a image specification both of these standards are given by OCI we spoke about container images we spoke about repository standards but when we are talking about containers it's not a single container when we talk about a real world project there will be tons of containers that we will be spinning up there would be an ask to manage monitor scale them look at their health so all of these tasks need to be done when we are spinning up containers there is a life cycle management associated with that container and that is where container orchestrations comes into picture anything starting from provisioning the container to deploying it scaling it up or uh, horizontally load balancing it and healing it if there are certain containers where the we see a problem how do we heal that all of these activities constitute container orchestration and a very very commonly used container orchestration tool is kubernetes in the market okay now since we spoke about all the basic things let's now look at advantage and use cases so the advantage i had spoken in the previous video of containerization as well containers are very very helpful because they are lower in cost they are lighter in weight than vms they are pretty much scalable because it's a logical unit we have packaged everything together scaling is easy they can replicate they allow flexible routing and resilience plus portability why portability because we are talking about a complete package which can run in different environments so we don't need to worry if our code is working today in one environment will it work in another it will because we are packaging all the dependencies together irrespective of the environment in which it runs so it is giving a full operability portability os independence and faster deploy deployment because so this will help us to realize the ci cd or devops automation because it is easier to scale deploy and take it to different environments we the developers or the ops uh, team doesn't have to spend time figuring out the dependencies why it is breaking in another environment how does the environment look like containers would take care of all of those dependencies so that's a big big advantage and it will help us in reducing the cost and time taken to uh, deploy now coming on to prominent use cases what are the use cases so typically whenever we want to have ci cd we want to have a well developed deployment process which is fully automated in those cases containers would help if we want to do a seamless migration or of, of our applications across different os versions networks topologies or configurations containers are the answer we don't want to go into the hassle of resolving dependencies taking care of different configurations uh, i mean different environments it helps the developer to focus on the development unit testing and design and not worry about the deployment and infrastructure it improves the application security because the container are isolated from so, so when we are creating containers we are launching applications in the containers it improves the application security by isolation from other applications it is much more lightweight than the vms it improves efficiency because we are able to scale and deploy at a faster rate so these are some of the use cases these are advantage come use cases we can look at these and decide whether we want to use containers these days containers are rampantly used for microservices based architecture it makes both developers and operations teams life easier so that's all about containers the basic terminologies used the advantages and use cases i hope this helps you to understand the concept of container in subsequent videos we will look at docker and kubernetes in detail thanks for listening in please like share and subscribe to the video thank you